Hey guys, David here and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to show you how I made this uh, 4x4 uh, keypad uh, with some LEDs here that you can either use for macros for your computer or what I'm going to do with it is going to use it as a controller for my CNC machine. I'm going to be able to like move all the axes around and uh, customize all the buttons to do the various things I needed them to do around with my machine. Now the basic components for this uh, is an Arduino Pro Micro. Uh, that's the one that has the USB driver uh, built in so you can use it as a keyboard input uh, for the computer. And I made this little uh, PCB here uh, that connects all the switches and the Arduino. And I can also hook up a little uh, rotary encoder to have some additional functionality. Now speaking of this uh, PCB here, I want to give a big thanks uh, to today's sponsor, which is PCBWay. They make super high quality PCBs uh, at extremely low prices. A uh, set of 10 of these uh, boards, which are double sided, fully printed with a nice silk screen, everything, just $5. And that's incredibly inexpensive. So. Uh, no matter like your experience level or if it's just a quick project, the price is not going to be the issue. And the quality of them is super good, so nothing to comp complain whatsoever. Make sure to go check out PCBWay, link down below. So I already uh, assembled uh, one unit here. Um, there were some issues with the uh, casing that I didn't quite get right in the first edition. So I changed those in the CAD model and then 3D printed a new case for uh, the second uh, edition. And uh, also some electronics that aren't quite working, but uh, hopefully in the second round uh, this should be better. The back is just... Uh, removable like snaps on and uh, I also have these standoffs that I can use to mount it to something or uh, use to keep the case shut. So how about I change the angle a bit for the camera and we'll do a time-lapse assembly of this second unit so you can see everything that goes in. Now I didn't bother making a uh, a soldering template for this uh, since there's not that many uh, components on it but PCBWay also offers uh, stencils that you can just uh, use to very easily apply solder paste to all the contact points. I'm just going to do it manually and solder some of the components with a soldering iron since there's really not all that many of them. Alright, so I finished up with the assembly of uh, this second version and everything went quite smoothly. Uh, uh, all the LEDs are lining up perfectly. I had some issues in the first one, but here uh, it worked out fine, uh, which is great. Now, uh, for now I just uh, screwed in some bolts in the bottom here to fix the enclosure together, but later uh, these uh, four bolts, uh, which are completely over-engineered to just hold the enclosure together, are gonna be where I m actually mount it to the CNC or whatever else you would want to mount it to. There's also uh, these uh, five connectors on the back here uh, where I can uh, attach a rotary encoder, uh, and this one actually uh, also has a button integrated which uh, works quite well and the reason why it's separate is so I can uh, have this as a, an external thing uh, to play around with but it's not like the main function of the thing. 
Now, just quickly, uh, for those who are interested, I'm going to go over the code real quick and show you uh, how the different things uh, work. But basically, uh, as soon as you plug in the cable, it is detected as a keyboard and it works just like a regular keyboard. So right now I set it up as a number block with some extra things, but I can send any character so it can be, uh, or any character combination even. It, super free. I can even use this as a MIDI input so if I wanted to uh, do some uh, audio automation like if you're programming drums or whatever you could uh, create your own MIDI board using this same uh, tech, uh, Arduino uh, basically. It's just a different library than what I'm using right now. So let's have a quick look uh, on the computer. All right, so here we are uh, in the computer. I just have notepad open here to demonstrate real uh, quick uh, that when I press these keys, uh, just like on a regular keyboard, uh, the character appears and if I long press them, after a while it starts spamming. Uh, like how long you have to press till it starts spamming and how fast it spams and all of that is of course customizable since the code is written from scratch. Also the encoder wheel here, if I turn it, then uh, it writes uh, stuff and if I turn it the other way it writes uh, different stuff and when pressing on it uh, it also uh, writes things and even it recognizes uh, double clicks or just a single clicks and all of that is of course customizable. I haven't really uh, done much uh, with that wheel but like in a more uh, more centered towards the CNC, like turning it one way will probably move the axis in positive direction, turning it the other way will move the axis in negative direction, and maybe clicking on it will uh, change how, like which axis, or and then double clicking would, for example, change uh, how fast it is moving or something like that. That's just, uh, I haven't decided yet fully uh, how I'm gonna implement this, but uh, this is just the basic techno technology behind it. If you take just a quick look at the code here, um, the libraries I'm using uh, is uh, keyboard.h, uh, that's to send keyboard uh, signals to the computer. The Adafruit NeoPixel library is to control the LEDs, since they are uh, addressable NeoPixel compatible LEDs. Click Encoder uh, is the one library I used for the encoder wheel and timer one is just required for the click encoder. Then here uh, basically is uh, where I set up some of the variables for how the keyboard reacts. Uh, the long press delay is uh, how long it takes until uh, it starts spamming and then spam speed is the time between the different uh, keys that are sent. Um, now these are not any like normal time measurement, it's just uh, how many times the loop goes through, uh, which is about every two milliseconds. So. Uh, 350 would be about 0.7 seconds roughly and just uh, kind of like played around with those numbers uh, until it uh, felt basically like a regular keyboard as that's what i was going for then here is uh, the character lay layout which is just a two-dimensional array uh, of uh, char uh, char variable type uh, so i can have any character in here also things like um right arrow key or left arrow key is also available. I just have to put in the right code for it. Uh, there's a list uh, online with uh, what you would have to type in uh, for that. But for now, just set up a simple uh, number key layout. And uh, the layout here is also how it is visible on the keyboard itself. And these are just the characters for the encoder that is set up here. I set up, I uh, just declare all the pins, like the regular Arduino stuff, set up the keyboard and serial uh, connections and set the LEDs right now just to a, a simple color uh, by strip dot set pixel color. I can set the color of uh, the LEDs right now. Um, here is an RGB value. So 505050 50 is a relatively dim white, but these LEDs do draw quite a bit of power. So setting them to full brightness would probably uh, be too much power drawn uh, from the USB port. Uh, and I would have to add extra power. And so I went with a quite conservative 50, uh, which is still relatively bright. I haven't done anything fancy with the LEDs yet, but uh, I could see myself having them as like an output. For example, if the machine is running and uh, one of the LEDs is green or if it's paused, it's yellow, something like that. It's fairly simple to set that up in the code. 
then just quickly the main loop it's very uh, simple it uh, one going through the main loop uh, reads out all the keys once uh, here uh, this part is repeated four times and that is for the four rows and then it basically sets since the, the keys are set up in a matrix it's uh, sets one of the rows high uh, logically and then reads out if any of the keys uh, are also high and that would mean that the key is pressed then it sets the row low again and moves on to the next row and repeats that process if a key is pressed then the key press function is, is called which then handles that or, or if it's not pressed anymore I check if the software thinks it is still pressed then I update that in the software uh, to reset it and then afterwards I just uh, wait uh, for a half a millisecond to kind of give all the electronics and everything uh, some time to properly finish the stuff and not um, get stuff in the wrong order it just works better that way if you're really concerned about high speed operation for example or for gaming or whatever you could of course also uh, decrease that but for what i'm doing like it's not noticeable the whole uh, process takes about two, two milliseconds so it would be like a 500 hertz uh, polling rate which is really um, totally fine um, for anything i will ever use this for now i won't go any more in depth about uh, the code or the electronics uh, exactly in this video um, but if you guys are interested i'll probably make a kind of how to tutorial for uh, keyboards since i've done quite a few now and i think it's, it's quite a fun subject in if in, if you don't want to necessarily build a big uh, keyboard uh, a lot of the techniques used in here like the matrix for the key reading or the key keyboard li uh, library uh, can also be applied to many of the projects so if you're interested in a video like that make sure to leave a comment and a like down below uh, so i know that uh, this is something you will be down to watch so with that we're at the end of uh, this video i hope you guys uh, liked it and uh, learned something new or got some ideas for projects of your own and if you have any more questions leave them down in the comments also make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future content related to this uh, project and many many others if you want to stay up to date with what i'm doing you can also check out my social media accounts linked down below with that said thanks for watching and until next time